I think we're recording. You got a funny one-liner about this one? Oh, we're recording? Yeah, we're recording. I have no way to tell. I can't see the screen. <laughs> um, I've got nothing. <laughs> White Christians are the worst. That's all I got. <laughs> well, it's not my best. <laughs> what do you think? Start off for me. Being in a uh, dealing with I mean, eh. what do you think? A stranger finding interdimensional monsters or being in Christian camp? Uh. Stranger intermet is interdimensional monsters, but like Christian camp is probably more awkward. I'd probably rather be fighting interdimensional on monsters because it's interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're talking about yes, God, yes. We came out about a month ago, give or take. Um, that is a kind of indie comedy uh, starring Nat uh, Natalia Dyer. Um, who is known from Stranger Things, as I assume the parts everyone knows her from. Um, and Hannah Montana, the movie, apparently. Huh. Okay. Okay. Sure. Kind of a weird credit, but okay. Uh, sure. Um, I, I have to describe my personal context of this movie going into it, because yeah, this movie brought up some very odd, like, memories I haven't thought about in like well over five years. <laughs> uh, Actually, hang on one sec. I'm using the back camera because I thought it would clear, but I'm just, this is weird. So I'm just going to switch it around. <laughs> okay, while you're doing that, I'll explain my little story here. So for those who don't understand my context growing up, I grew up in a very white, conservative Christian household uh, that was homeschooled. I wasn't Catholic, but I still did all the church things. Uh, which means went to church, did all the youth group stuff, and I went to the goddamn Bible camps. Um, and it wasn't quite like this. There was a lot of differences. You were given a lot more independence. Uh, you kind of go and do whatever you wanted, except you had to go to like the fucking uh, church preach the uh, sermons every night. Um, but there are a lot of similarities, and for some reason, every goddamn Bible camp and church group, youth group, has to have a fucking campfire. Um, I don't know why, but watching this movie has brought all of those memories back, and that was a chair. Um, <laughs> you doing okay over there, buddy? <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> Having technical difficulties. Um, so yeah, watching, go on. Just watching this, and because, like, granted, I, I remember, I, I'm not going to say the name of the camp I went to, because I don't want, like, people that use that to track me down. Um, granted, I have the most common names in America, so it's not like they could if they tried. Um, <laughs> they track you down? I don't know. Uh, was it Scientology camp? <laughs> no, it was... Uh, going to find you in a bathtub with your skin boiled off? Like, what, what it, are you afraid of? I'm, I'm afraid of John Travolta, man. <laughs> uh, anyway. So, um, or that and I also don't want to get sued if this is like the one video we make that ever goes viral. But uh, I'll put you into Battlefield Earth Two against your will. Oh my god! You know, I would, I would think I would volunteer to be in Battlefield Earth Two just to see. Just so you could stand around in that makeup and go ah 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 ah. If only I can just like troll John Travolta in the background, just going spell your name, <laughs> really right. laughing. Um. But yeah, so and like I was like fifth, like fourteen, fifteen around this, uh, going to these stupid camps and a lot of these awkward moments that this that goes on. It's like, oh, I've been there. I didn't see that, but I felt that. <laughs> uh, awkwardly fumbling around, no idea what you're doing. Awkward social circles, with all the all all the Christian fucking people there. Always have this weird cult like happy face and it's unnerving that part is real they all fucking have it and i don't get it <laughs> it's the love of jesus no it's not it's hiding something and, yeah no it's hiding the fact that you're afraid that people will think that you don't feel the love of jesus as much as they do 
and then they'll realize you're lying about how much Jesus loves you and how you feel about it. And so you just you force it and pretend. Uh, yeah. So yeah, this is this way for all those successfully repressed memories back into the forefront of my brain. Um, for what is it for all those purposes? A very wholesome, very charming film about discovering your sexuality. <laughs> yeah. Um, Under a culture that is practically built around shaming your sexuality. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it, it does this thing. Oh, damn it. Hang on. My light. Come back. There you go. Um, no, there's a. This movie does a really good job of having like scenes where a very young girl is curious about sex and learning about sex and kind of finding out about sex mm -hmm. without having it be sexualized yeah it, it's it's i felt nothing more for her through the movie than just overwhelming pity and empathy and like, and like i didn't feel super awkward during the scenes that like she was finding stuff out about herself or whatever and those are pretty brief as it is like it wasn't I know people might look at this movie and be like, I don't know if I want to hear about a young girl learning things about herself. Like, um, I don't know why I gave it that voice, but, uh, <laughs> but, but it, it's, it's, those parts of the movie are not really an issue. They're not uncomfortable or really intense. Um, they're awkward on a certain level. Um, I mean, to be fair, I feel like but, any possible controversy we could have drummed up would have been drowned out by cuties like two weeks later. <laughs> oh God! But um, no, the the way that it approaches the subjects that it approaches mm -hmm. is really deft, yeah. and I was really impressed by what this movie did, especially in the way that it kind of it subverts expectations of filmmaking and script writing. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I don't want to spoil anything mm -hmm. um, about like how it takes, how things happen during this movie or where things go. But I was surprised by how wholesome it remained throughout, even as yeah. different sexual topics were brought up and I just really liked it. It was really sweet. It was cute. I had a really good time. And with funny. It. And funny. It was surprisingly it was, funny. Natalie and Natalia Dyer has such great facial expressions. Yeah, uh, no, she's amazing. <laughs> like, and she has this great way of act. Like, you do genuinely feel like she is witnessing this for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Just based just on the, the, the oh oh. Just <laughs> like, the. Like well, curiosity, it's, it's, and then like. Whoa, versus, oh, maybe? Really, really <laughs> interesting stuff. There's, um, there are little weird bits of comedy dropped throughout the movie. They're just, like, little innuendos. Yeah. Um, like, the one, like, do you, you want the I, walking, do you want the stand-up taco? <laughs> it goes great. Oh, the walking with taco. Uh, the stand, or is it walking or stand, it was standing Walking. Taco. I was walking taco. I was like, yeah. you, you want sour cream? It's the best part. <laughs> you know, shit like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> And then, she, and then it's like, well, I guess now I have to try it. Um, <laughs> but then there's the there's the camp counselor that she has this really intense crush on, who just has the most unnerving arm hair. Like and every time he's on screen, we could not look at it. <laughs> it's meant to be like sexualized as this thing that she fantasizes about because she the the person that she runs into online that sects her initially is uh like hairy chest yeah some number and so she sees this dude's arms at camp and i guess he's supposed to be like 17 or 18 but he has like the most uneven patchy arm hair like, and when like i say uneven and patchy I, I mean the patches that have come in are seriously like they're, they're they're like two inch long cubes. Like it's so unsettling. I, I was mean, like, ah. Like, uh, I got pretty hairy uh, arms. I don't know if you can see that. No, dude, like, I'm like like, like, like I'm middle eastern. Like, big like chunks. 
of hair. Yeah, it's kind no, of I'm Middle Eastern. Like around. this is this is at least evenly distributed for the most part. <laughs> Him, he had like it's like literally they just grabbed hair out of the drain and then just slapped it on his arm and glued <laughs> it on. Like it was so. Ugh. Uh, it, it bothered me. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but like, and like, I, I didn't. I wasn't raised Catholic, but like I said, I do. I do recognize a lot of these teachings uh, because, like, I was never taught like the on switch versus the microwave in terms of how people get turned on. Like this movie describes it, but uh, I can. I have gone to a goddamn ceremony that was an abstinence uh-huh. ceremony <laughs> that I and my sister were a part of. Um, it did not take. But I still did it at the time. <laughs> oh man, I, oh, I, it's so I, weird I, looking back on that now because I like. I mean, even now I'm kind of more agnostic. But I look back on all and now, it's like, man, I went along with a lot of shit. <laughs> well, it's not like you knew any better back in high school. Like, sure. yeah, I didn't have anything on that level, but um, we did have like abstinence classes in high school, and. Uh, my my favorite memory of those is still, um, they had a, a they they brought everyone into the the theater mm-hmm. of the school, and they had a giant screen up and they did a projector on it, and they just showed a bunch of like close up pictures of horrible like really advanced STDs and stuff. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> and I wore glasses, so I just took my glasses off and laughed at the people around me <laughs> reacting. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was hilarious because I was like, I can't see it. I just see like gray and green blurs. You looked awful. It must be terrible up there. I have <laughs> I, no idea. I see um, your humor developed early. <laughs> oh man, always. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I abstinence only training is a very interesting thing. Um, oh god, like but I was yeah, never that's baptized. The I think I was never even baptized. I think I, look, I took one look at it when everyone else was doing it. Like, I ain't doing that. <laughs> that well, worked. that explains a lot, Michael. <laughs> like, that explains like, how you oh, strayed so far. <laughs> um, now, I'm, now I'm like almost in my 30s and I say fuck all the time. If I'm going to hell, I'm having a sweet. Yeah. You just said goddamn. You just yeah. blasphemed in this conversation a couple minutes ago when referring to your Bible camp. I feel like me and Jesus are on the same page. Like, I, you, sometimes you just got to say it, you know? Sometimes you just gotta say, God damn. Um, but yeah, so anyway, the movie. Say, God damn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, the movie, uh, the movie is surprisingly wholesome and enjoyable and sweet and charming and has a good sense of humor. There are a couple small things I wanna touch on, which are minor spoilers. Yeah. I don't wanna jump too much into like spoiler, spoiler territory, but overall, I really enjoyed this. Um, oh, and it surprised me with how decent it was. I, I just got to bring one smi- slight tangent. It just reminds me of there's a scene. Slight tangent. Very, very slight. Got God on the brain. Uh, kind of. Uh, there's a scene in Adventure Time where Finn eventually ends up talking to like Gob, Glob, Grod, whoever the uh, three-headed oh, Don't is. tell me too much. I still haven't gotten too it's far. It's literally a scene. I'm not spoiling anything anyway. Uh, and then, like, It'd be we, an we, important we, scene, Michael. It's not an important scene. He literally just goes like, hey, do you ever say, do you ever say, God damn it, and he just lives to that extent? It's like, no, but sometimes Bob does. <laughs> uh. Uh, but anyway, no, yeah, this is like uh. a really surprisingly wholesome coming of age story that kind of hit those sweet notes, uh, like you said, without being sexualized, and it, it feels authentic. Um, I mean, given the- that it was written and directed by a woman who looks about the right age to have been the age that that girl was at that time, I wouldn't be surprised if it was based on her own personal experiences. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like Edge of Seventeen, where it's like, yeah, this stuff like is new for cinema, but it feels like it was written by somebody who went through this. Yeah, no, it feels really real. Um, and I think that contributes to the part that I think um, was so good about it for me, where it subverted my expectations of what I thought it was going to be. God damn it. Oh, Come you back. Too. There we go. Um, but yeah, so solid movie. Um, I would say a solid like seven out of ten. Yeah, I, I like the Lamar. I give it a solid eight, but I also, I'm also a sucker for kind of wholesome movies like this. Yeah, uh, like this is only 77 minutes. Like it's barely over an hour, so it's a real and quick it one. It didn't need to be longer too. So like, yeah. Yeah, no, it it got it got what it needed to done. Um, 
And I appreciate it. I, I like movies like this. I think it's always like, good to have things like, you know, not too dramatic, not too comedic. It has, it has the right balance. Yeah. Um, it says what it needs to say without getting too one way or another. And it, it's, it hits the point I feel like it needs to hit for the audience I feel like would watch this movie. Yeah. Um, um, all right. So. Spoilers from here. Spoiler. Okay. So I just really want to say that I fully expected, and I think that it, it plays with this. I fully expected that at the end of the movie, with everything that she had seen and everything that she had learned about everybody, that when she went up to talk in front of everybody, that she was just going to like raise like, hell yeah, like and fucking, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like rat people out and just like cause a lot of drama. And that was going to be the climax of the movie. And like generally in in screenwriting school, like screenwriting school, uh, film school, like just oh, the way they teach screenwriting is that when you add elements of the plot, they need to be used in some way down the line. And with how movies work, I really expected that to be like some big dramatic ending. Mm -hmm. But in the end, the purpose that those scenes serve are strictly in our own in in service of her own personal growth yeah and her own like self actualization and making peace with you know herself and what she's learning and that it's okay to be flawed and have these feelings and explore them a bit like i did not expect that and that yeah. really brought it full circle in terms of me loving this movie as like a wholesome thing rather than your average, you know, like wild comedy romp in Jesus camp about sex. Like it really felt like a genuine coming of age story that someone could learn something from as opposed to just being in service of like some wild drama or laughs at the end. I really appreciated yeah. that. Yeah, like this, is, this isn't a good boys, you know? Uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was still really good. Uh, yeah, no, I sort of like Mario too, but like I feel like the movie is a bit more cynical than this one is. Um, I don't know. It was super wholesome. It was wholesome too, but I, I'm not saying like I'm not saying Good Boys was horribly cynical or anything like that, but it was a bit more cynical yeah. than this movie was. Um, sure. All right. And I did like this movie kind of touching something about the the Christian community, Catholic, Protestant, whatever that isn't really talked a whole lot about, which is the shaming of sexuality. Um, and I do appreciate that it's something that's actively discussed in this movie because yeah. you don't, like outside of like joke stuff again, you really don't hear it being talked about in an authentic way. That's not just the butt of a joke because it can't, it is kind not kind of it is a kind of a serious problem. Um, yeah, and well, it could, and it could fuck up a lot of people that grew up on that. Uh, so it's like it's I kind of like mess with like it's okay to feel what you're feeling. It's okay to express that. Not everybody needs to know about it if you don't want them to, but yeah. don't be ashamed of it either because that doesn't help you. And I just kind of appreciate yeah. that lesson. Um, well, the other the other side of it that I appreciate is that when you do see a movie like this come up, generally, you know, the like a lot of the time the end result is the person like leaving behind religion or whatever or saying like, fuck it and going on some wild romp to discover themselves. And I love those movies as much as anybody, but I really appreciated that this movie had that conversation and still had it within the context of Christianity. And at the end, she was still Christian. She still had a relationship with Jesus and she was ready to grow as an adult into yeah. that kind of thing while still knowing that she didn't have to forsake her beliefs to, you know, be herself and have these feelings. And, you know, I, I, while personally I'm not Christian and that kind of message doesn't mean anything in regards to my experiences and retaining my faith or anything, I really appreciate that this has put something out there where somebody who might be having some kind of dilemma like that, but has no desire to leave behind their faith mm -hmm. could watch this and get a wholesome message out of that and actually feel, you know, a little more at peace. I really appreciate that. Yeah, because, like, especially when you're in that kind of Christian community and you kind of discover your sexuality, it's a touchy subject. Um, <laughs> not what I meant, but sure. Uh, <laughs> no pun intended. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah, well, it happened anyway. 
Yeah, oh well. Um, but no, it is it is a tr- it is tricky to kind of because you feel ashamed for feeling that way. You feel ashamed for talking about it, and uh, it, if you don't find a way to deal with it, it can legitimately fuck you up. Yeah. Um, so it's like pressed sexual urges come out in weird ways later. Yes, they do. <laughs> um, let's see if I uh, your uh, your search history in your twenties. Uh, um, so like I, I appreciate that when we that opens a dialogue like this, it doesn't shame religion on its core or anything like that. It doesn't denounce it yeah. as like bad no, or evil if you feel this way or if you are religious. So much as, like, hey, this is a part of who you are. Whether other parts of you that exist, whatever right you choose to go, whether you stay religious or you don't, yeah, it's okay to feel that way. And I yeah, think, it's part of growing up. Yeah, and I, you're gonna have these feelings. And I hope I'm hoping that's a message that eventually gets normalized across all communities. But we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah. So yeah, for that merit, this week it's like I appreciate this movie a lot more than I thought I was going to. So I'm glad I I went on my way to go watch it. Yeah. So Good that's sort of my final thought on it. You got anything else? No, I've said my piece. All right, cool. So, uh, yeah, do you got time to talk about Feels Good Man, or? Yep, I believe I do. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> 